with Vince McMahon apparently turning down a feud between Miro and Daniel Bryan and a couple of main event AEW stars showing off their change in appearance. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for July 4th. When it comes to WWE returning to live touring, their ticket sales have been revealed, as the Wrestling Observer noted. Some other advances are 719 Raw in Dallas at 6600, 724 in Pittsburgh at 5500, 731 in Milwaukee at 3200, 81 SmackDown in Detroit at 5200, 82 Raw Chicago at 8300, 86 SmackDown in Tampa at 4800, 87 in Estro, Florida at 3900, 813 in Tulsa for SmackDown at 3500, 814 at Charlotte at 4000, 850 in Columbia, South Carolina at 4100, 816 Ron San Antonio at 5200, 820 SmackDown in Phoenix at 6000, 821 SummerSlam at 37000 in Las Vegas, 827 SmackDown in North Little Rock at 2600, the 830 Raw in Oklahoma City at 2400, and 96 Raw in Miami at 2500. It should be noted for their Money in the Bank pay-per-view, WWE has sold more than 9600 tickets, leaving around 270 left. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Being a veteran of WWE, Chris Jericho has had many legendary feuds. Speaking about his time in the company with Gresh and Keefe, Jericho touched on his rivalry with The Undertaker, mentioning that he wanted a more drawn out program with him, while saying he would have liked to face off against Bret and Owen Hart. I think the Hart brothers for sure, I'm talking about Bret Hart and Owen Hart, both of those guys I never got to wrestle. Owen passed away before I got into WWE and I wasn't at the level to wrestle Bret before he got injured, before his career was done. But I think with our backgrounds and kind of growing up in the same area and training the same way, those would have been a couple of classic feuds. The other one is The Undertaker. I worked him in a few times and we always had great matches, but we just never really had a long feud. Speaking of Jericho, with him on Gresh and Keefe, he was also asked about his favorite tag team partners. He replied, my favorite tag team partner of all time. And you can see that in the complete list of Jericho, I have my top 10 tag team partners, etc. Is always the big show. We had a great time together. We were like an old married couple and argue with each other. It was like, I can't find my glasses. Your glasses are on top of your head. Put them on so you can see. Don't tell me what to do. Great chemistry and just a great guy. With Paul White showing interest in teaming up with Jericho and AEW, we'll have to see if this reunion can come to fruition. In WWE, Rusev had been on a roll gaining a ton of momentum until he ran into John Cena. Apparently after that feud came to an end, he got turned down when it came to getting a program with Daniel Bryan. As his wife Lana said, this on talk is Jericho. We went to Vince the following week to pitch an idea to work with Daniel Bryan and he was like, no, I'm splitting you guys up. We were shocked. We had no idea and he was like, no, 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 he's hated and you're over. They love you. So you can go down to NXT or I was like, wait, I don't understand. Can I not be like a bitch? I can get hated. With Brian having to retire in 2016, this feud would have probably been scrapped anyway. In any event, Miro seems to be enjoying a great deal of success and AEW is TNT champion. Being recently released from WWE, former NXT star Killian Dane spoke to Ringside Rant about how being let go was just what he needed to complete his bucket list. I'm leaving in great shape. I'm probably about as healthy as I've been in six or seven years, and I've got five years of TV experience working with the likes of Shawn Michaels, Fit Finley, William Regal, all of these guys I idolized as a child, as a teen, as a wrestler, all of these people that had been helping us when I was on NXT and on the main roster. So the reason I'm quite positive is I'm definitely leaving a much better better talent than when I started. I'm pretty excited to get out there again, almost like I can bring my knowledge wherever I go. It's hard not to be optimistic because the world's opening up again and we're in this position almost on the other side of COVID where it'll be easier for people like me to get around the world. I still have a few things on the bucket list to do. This kind of gives me the kick up the arse that I need to make those things happen. Given his love for wrestling, we can expect Killian to continue making a name for himself outside of WWE.
Former WWE Champion John Moxley has had quite the run in AEW, becoming the World Heavyweight Champ. He has turned up the intensity and gone through a bit of a change in appearance since leaving WWE, yet now he has fans shocked with his new hairdo, or rather lack thereof. A fan posted a gif of Moxley taking off his cap to reveal a bald head. This has surprised many fans, but is a good look nonetheless. Speaking of a change in appearance, the current AEW champion Kenny Omega showed off his new look for his facial hair. Many fans have noted that this looks similar to one of Triple H's beards as Omega responded, ding ding ding. To be honest, Triple H never crossed my mind. Totally forgot about that phase in his career. With Zelina Vega recently making a return to WWE, many fans were surprised to see that she lost in her comeback match. PW Insider noted as far as cutting Vega's throat off, they announced she's in Money in the Bank, which is already a stronger push as a wrestler than she had received on the main roster. This loss to Liv Morgan allows a progression and storyline for Liv seeking redemption after getting snubbed constantly in the Money in the Bank match. With Vega now in the mix, this seems to be only the beginning. Being one of the greatest NXT champions, Adam Cole is seen as a star with a ton of potential in WWE. Speaking to Corey Graves on After the Bell, Cole touched on the matches he would love to have outside the black and gold brand. Funny enough, because it just recently happened, I really, really want to wrestle in a Hell in a Cell someday, because I'm an absolute maniac. I just think about all the iconic moments and matches. When I think about that iconic moment, when the music is playing and the cell is lowering, I just remember being so excited and it still makes me feel that way. In a perfect world, if past, present, or future doesn't matter, me versus Shawn Michaels is the one I would love. If I'm picking current guys to possibly face right now, I'm going to go Kyle O'Reilly. I am. While a match with Michaels would appear to be a pipe dream, a Hell in a Cell bout against O'Reilly is something fans could definitely sink their teeth into. With the Iconics awaiting their non-compete clause to run out after being let go by WWE, Billy Kay spoke to Renee Paquette about how difficult it was for their team to be broken up in the company. The split was rough. I didn't know who I was. I was a singles competitor and that was very confronting. Having Cassie not with me anymore, I remember thinking, oh, I have to walk to the ring and she's not going to be on my left. So don't look to the left or hold your hand out because she isn't going to be there. For some reason, I was like, okay, I have to be sexy. I thought it had to be something that I wasn't. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know what to do. I was thankful that I got to go to SmackDown because I definitely thought we needed to be on different brands and I don't think they realized what the domino effect would be after splitting a tag team up, especially us. So when I went to SmackDown, I mentioned this before, but Tyson Kidd helped me a lot. There was this one time where I told him, you're my new Cassie because everything I would vent to Cass about, I was just saying it to TJ. That's why he's so special. He listened to me and he supported me. I told him that I just wanted to be myself, make people laugh and smile. That's all I wanted to do. When the headshot resume kind of fell into my first promo, I was like, there's something here. I want to keep doing this. I spoke to the writers and luckily they were on board. I was having so much fun. I really was. The amount of praise that I got backstage after that, I was like, ah, if I'm remembered for anything and it's this, I'd be happy, happy, happy. It was so much fun. I think that was why it made it more of a shock about my release because I was booked for a couple weeks here and there. I was able to work with all the girls, which a lot of people aren't able to do. I was doing promos with Big E and the Street Profits. It was so much fun for me. I was really enjoying it. I was also so grateful to be at WrestleMania mania and be in that match because that was my last one. I'm trying to stay positive, but the shock and the raw emotion are still there. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Have an amazing 4th of July and I'll see y'all later.